Hey, YouTube. <laughs> What's going on? Yes. Hey, y'all. Happy Tuesday. All right. Enough of that. Enough of that. Happy Tuesday, guys. This is our Tuesday takeover where we cover a variety of pop culture news, reality TV, and reality TV news. I was just live a little early, a little early on Twitter and Twitch, just giving them a little preview, a little preview. All right. So for those that may have missed it, but if you follow me on Twitter or Twitch, then you already saw that we were al alive earlier, only a few minutes earlier uh, before we came here on YouTube and Facebook. As always, guys, don't forget you can take us on the go by downloading the Kempire podcast and you can hear the audio version of our Tuesday takeover today. But before we get into any of that, you know, we always love to start off the show with some good news. But before we do that, let me know where you're watching from and what you're excited to talk about today for our Tuesday takeover. Don't you listen to me? I got that flavor. I know you're dying to feed. I ain't no dancer. Just got some hip in my feet. Now throw your hands up. Ooh, you bring the lighter. I got the fuse. You make a fire. I'll add the fuel. Follow my lead. Just watch the shoes. Gotta turn the heat up to get this cool. Welcome back to the Kempire channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. I can't believe it's already Tuesday again. I feel like we just had Tuesday Takeover and we were covering so much. Tuesday Takeover, look, just when I think, oh, what are we going to talk about today? And then I'm like, I have too many stories to talk about, so we won't be able to get into every single story. Hopefully, we'll be able to do separate stories on them this week, if not today. All right. Shout out to everyone in the live chat. Shout out to our new members. And so we had quite a few new members that became members uh, today. So thank you to our members. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, head on over to teamkempire.com backslash join. And as you can see, scrolling across my screen, but for those that are listening to this on the Kempire podcast, we are going to be in Boston. We're going to be in Nashville. We're going to be in Atlanta. We're coming to Seattle. Those tickets are available now. And yes, more cities will be announced. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for that, all right? More information on the Kempire After Dark live show is available in the description. All right, shout out to our King's Guards that are always here ahead of me and starting the conversation in the live chat. So shout out to them. Be sure to say hello to our King's Guards. And just good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're watching from. Good evening, depending on where you're watching from. You know, we love to start our Tuesday takeover with some good news. So I love hearing your good news. Replay crew, let us know what your good news is for today or the week, all right? Some good news. Some good news that I wanted. First of all, again, happy Ramadan for those that celebrate. All right. Happy St. Patrick's Day for those that celebrated that. OK, uh, we have Easter coming up in just a couple of weeks. So happy Easter, early Easter. Uh, we also had the Image Award. We had a couple of different awards. shows. we had the um, the Glad Awards and then we had the the NAACP Awards. Uh, image awards that happened and everyone looked amazing at the image awards did you guys see um the folks at the image awards everyone looked really great shout out to people magazine because they um were showing us a little bit some of the best dressed at the image awards look i don't know if i take the image awards a hundred percent you know like i like i don't know their system I, I believe it's a lot of voting and things like that but you know these award shows nowadays it's not really about <laughs> you know it's it's not really about the quality of the work you know what i mean and i don't know i didn't watch the um 55th uh naacp or image awards chapter in verse um but i loved the fashion look at taraji p henson our girl carrie washington looked really really great she usually does. I actually have to say, I haven't been loving Usher's fashion lately, but I like this because to me, this isn't your typical tux. 
that you wear to the, you know, any red carpet. I have to say, I, I, I enjoy it. It kind of is like a throwback to the 70s. All right. Uh, thank you. D says, D Pegram says, we need your podcast nominated next year for the NAACP. Well, you know, I saw a, a lot of, you never mind. I'm going to leave that. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> all right. Uh, I like the suit, though. I could see I could see me wearing the suit, chest all out. Okay, Usher looks great. Can we just take a moment? I know last week we were slamming Usher for being in Bali, hanging out with Russell Simmons. Exactly. Mary Jane's baby says, Usher is giving old school Marvin Gaye fashion. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. I have to say he looks great, though. Like, skin is skinning. Hairline is hairlining. Um... <laughs> The suit is suiting. I like it. But like I said, I haven't loved all of his uh, his looks. Usher, as you can see from People Magazine's report, winner of both the Outstanding Male Artist and Entertainer of the Year categories, as well as the President's Award, posed in a black satin Laquan Smith suit. I didn't know Laquan Smith did men, menswear. So that's good to know. Little, little, that's good to know. <laughs> like I can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantasia and her stylist deserve an award. Please invite her to the next fashion award something. Because her fashion has been fashioning. Did you guys see her speech? She won for Outstanding Actress in a Motion Picture. Um, wore a custom Mano gown. A major bow matching the sequins gloves and Masika jewelry. I think she looks great. I think she looks great. All right. She looks, I mean, from head to toe, she's been looking, she's been giving so many amazing looks. I have to say, Leslie Jones was a surprise, a pleasant surprise. She looks beautiful, beautiful. I like this grown and sexy look that she's giving here. Quinta Brunson, you know, I just love me some Abbott Elementary. She could do no wrong in my eyes. I, I'm just so happy for her. Congratulations to her. She won for Outstanding Actress in a Comedy Series. All right. She wore Naheem Khan dress. All right. I loved her speech as well. I really loved her speech. OK, one of my favorite looks, if you follow us on YouTube, I showed you guys this look on on our community tab. I love this look from Kiki Palmer. Please. Can we get a round of applause for Kiki Palmer in this look? I wasn't expecting this. And it is. First of all, she posed up with her father. If you follow us on YouTube, then you saw on the community guidelines community guidelines, community tab, uh, the picture with her dad. First of all, her dad is handsome, too. They looked amazing together as well. <laughs> you know, Philly, <laughs> Philly Joe says, Kempi, we know you You like the chesticles out. <laughs> Come on. Um, look, I was giving a look in D.C., okay? All right. Um, so I love this look on Kiki Palmer. I, I, I did not expect it. I love when women play with that tux sort of like male version you know feminizing it in a way she looks great hair makeup suit is suiting i loved it she was a quadruple nominee at the image awards all right she rocked a tom ford tuxedo jacket with dolce and gabbana pants and shoes for the ceremony love it and one of my faves that we don't get uh, we don't talk about enough yara shahidi okay come on just a round of applause beautiful but what I love about Yara is not her beauty. It's how smart and eloquent she is. That's what I love. But she's also beautiful. Like, this is a look. This is gorgeous. Look at Yara Shahidi. This is gorgeous. Beautiful. She's giving faith. Like, her mother's gorgeous, too. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I look forward to seeing what she's going to give us in, in the future, uh, no matter what it is. If it's entertainment, if it's something else. You also know I post this picture on our community tab as well. I love me some Cheryl Lee Ralph, okay? Cheryl, this color. Cheryl Lee Ralph is a woman of a particular age, but you could not tell. You could not tell. She looks amazing here. She looks amazing. Andra Day, okay, the blue. The blue is bluing. Andrew, when are we getting some new music? <laughs> when are we getting some new, new music? All right. Uh, she performed Minnie Ripperton's Memory Lane for the memor In Memoriam segment, shown in a shimmery cobalt blue Naeem Khan gown with a, a one shoulder neckline and a thigh high slit. All right. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Very, very, very talented uh, as well. Danielle Brooks. A lot of people said she was robbed. She was robbed at the Oscars. I, I don't know about that. 
But I know, well, they also said she was robbed at the Image Awards because I believe Taraji won in her category. And uh, look, I like this. To me, it's simple. It's nothing too much. I like the, the addition of like, we are talking fashion right now. I didn't mean for this to turn into fashion, but it is what it is. But I, I like this look. It's simple. You know what I mean? This is what Dorit was trying to go with for the reunion. You see the little curl in the hair? But it works here for our girl, Danielle Brooks. It works. Danielle, this is this is just the start of your amazing career. You're such a talented actress. You did amazing in The Color Purple. The Color Purple got all kinds of awards at the, the NAACP Image Awards. Tashina Arnold, love it, love it. You see, I like this look on her. First of all, she looks amazing. And I just like the, the little, you know, touch of blue on her feet. Pretty, pretty. Halle Bailey was also there looking gorgeous. All right. Look at this look. I like the green. I like, you know, the snapback. And she, you know, she just had a baby. She's confirmed. All right. Uh, Ava DuVernay, speaking of very talented people, uh, she looks great. But I mean, her talent for me is even bigger than her being on the red carpet. Like she's amazingly talented. Misty Copeland. Misty Copeland's giving us a look. Again, very much. Look, giving us what Dorit tried to give us. <laughs> what Dorit tried to give us with the hair. Our girls, Misty and Danielle Brooks, are achieving that. They are achieving that. And I like just the masculine feminine that she's giving in this look. I love that. I love it. All right. Um, and that's, that's, I mean, I had more photos that I wanted to show you guys. I don't know if I have them on here the way that I wanted them. I think I do. Hold on, y'all. It's a live show. Look, it's a live show. And congratulations. Wait, congr first of all, congratulations to everyone that won at the NAACP awards. Congratulations to everyone that won an award. Okay. Um, and look, and shout out to all the people that attended. Because, you know, they say so many times that a lot of the big name black celebrities don't attend these award shows. And look, they had Oprah Winfrey there. They had o Oprah was in the house. All right. Um, Oprah was also at the Glad Awards as well. All right. Uh, I really like Fantasia's look. I really, really, really liked her look. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Her, her stylist has not been missing at all. At all. Um... Who else? Let me see. Do I want to highlight? No, we already saw these photos. Okay. Guys, if you're just joining us, this is our Tuesday Takeover. We're just talking a little bit about the NAACP Awards. Again, congratulations to all of the winners. No, I was not one of them, but I wasn't nominated, so why would you expect that I would have been? <laughs> it's all right. Uh, Adrian, thank you so much for the super chat. Adrian says, Usher can pull off different looks. I mean, he can. I mean, And not everyone can. Not everyone can, but I really liked his look at the NAACP Image Awards. I, to me, of all the gender bending looks that he was, he's been trying to do in the last year, that probably was like one of my favorites. Uh, but he really can get away with a lot. He really can get get away with a lot. Not a lot of people can wear. Like I don't think I can wear just oh any any old thing either. Like there's certain things that just look better on certain people. All right. Anyways, again, congratulations to all of the winners. Let's get into some reality TV talk before we get into the mess. OK, let's start off with 90 Day The Single Life. <laughs> so we are finally at 90 Day The Single Life Tell All. OK, 90 Day The Single Life. <laughs> TB says, woo -woo. You woo -woo -woo -woo. I love it when we do the campfire after dark and you guys woo 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 to me. Uh -huh. DB's like, whoa, 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 campfire, you weren't nominated. It's all right. <laughs> Maybe next year, okay? Mark our words, next year, and then we'll be talking about me on the red carpet. <laughs> okay. And maybe I'll wear Usher, what Usher wore last year, <laughs> or this year. I'll wear it next year. <laughs> Think I can pull it off? Maybe. All right. Um, What was I saying? Okay. Um, Here we go. Um. <laughs> The single life, 90 days of single life. Okay, honestly, I don't want to talk about every single nitty gritty, nitty gritty detail of the tell all. I just want to talk about the things that stood out to me. Um, Chantel and her mom, they are like spitting images. What happened to Karen, Chantel's mom? Did she go to the Instagram model makeover situation? Like, 
why is she? I, I, she doesn't look bad. Don't get me wrong. I just was not ready for Miss Karen to look like that. And you see how much uh, Chantel and Karen look alike. Yes, that's her daughter. But I didn't see it as as bright as day as now I see, that I see it. But I was like, what is she? What is she wearing? <laughs> but, you know, Karen's going to be Karen. She's going to be kooky. We, we she, Chantel has turned into her mom, too. Like, her kookiness has just gotten worse. All right? So they briefly are talking to Chantel. We'll probably talk more about Chantel next week. But apparently Debbie had a big problem with Chantel mentioning that she had no underwear on during during the season. Did you guys think that that was a big deal? I don't think that it was a big deal. But I feel as if you already know how I feel about Chantel and her story. Okay, because I just feel like they focus on the wrong thing. Like, I don't want to talk about Chantel um, trying to get into another serious relationship when you literally just got uh, a divorce from being in a very serious relationship, from being in your early 20s getting into a serious relationship. So I felt like this this single life, and again, it's a metaphor for what I think the show should represent. It's not just a, single people aren't just trying to date. Single people aren't just, uh, so desperate to be in a relationship. And I feel like Chantel could have represented for women, especially black women, on this show as someone, yeah, I got a divorce, but right now I just want to have fun. And I wish that's what they would have done. You know? But I can wish all I want. These these 90 Day producers, they, they don't know what they're doing because you saw what Happily Ever After looks like, right? We have literally like half the cast from 90 Day Fiance, the season that we just wrapped on this on this new season. And I feel like the whole situation of Michael uh, being missing, you know, Michael um, from Nigeria, him being missing was a plot that Todd set up for the BS. I feel like they were doing this to help promote Happily Ever After. Anyone else? Did you guys not see that? We reported on this a couple of weeks ago about Michael, you know, Angela's Michael from Nigeria going missing and then telling police that, oh, um, I can't be around her. <laughs> I don't feel safe around her. So apparently he's on Happily Ever After with, with Angela. And I thought there were protests to have Angela removed. All right, we'll, we'll get to 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After in just a second. Because I feel like I'm ready, I'm ready to talk about everything there. But the tell-all, the tell-all. First of all, I don't care what anyone says. Ty Ray might be a 30-something-year-old virgin. But for me, Ty Ray seems to have the most sense of everyone, right? And then they were backstage talking about Tyree, pop, you know, one day he'll have sex and things like that. And Tyree, first of all, Tyree, TMI, he was like, but it works. His Speaking about his situation down there, but it works. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't need to know that. But up, I love Tyree in his confessional. He's like, he's not going to listen to people that are single currently on The Single Life. And I was like, you know what, Tyree? Points have been made. And mind you, we've talked about Tyre before. And we've said, like, he'll have these moments of clarity. So Tyre, he might be a little woo-woo-woo. But I have to say, of anyone on 90 Day Fiance, he seems very normal. <laughs> very normal. If anything, above normal for, for this damn show. But we, again, 30-something-year-old virgin that was talking to someone in the islands for multiple years, giving them money, even showed up to the island to give give them things, but never met them, and it ended up being a man. I mean, then, then there is that. We're just lucky that Tyree's okay. He went to the islands, went to bring money there. The man is watching him. Could have taken his life. Look. Oh, damn. Look. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, who else did I want to talk about? Who else did I want to talk about? We didn't really get a lot of Natalie yet. Um, we got a lot of Veronica and Tim. I, look, I don't know if I'm just a little desensitized to Tim and his outfits. I really wasn't because I noticed it immediately. From the hair and the beard and the outfit. Okay, so apparently Veronica and Jamal have broken up. 
I don't know what's happening between Jamal and uh, Tim's girl. What was her name again? You guys will remind me in the chat. But she came out hot coming for Veronica because things didn't work out between Tim and this other woman. And she was spilling tea on Veronica about what Veronica said about Tim and what Veronica said about Jamal, saying that Jamal's trash, he's unemployed. I mean, no lies. <laughs> I told you, I feel like there's a, a thirstiness about Jamal. Um, at one point, Jamal said to Tim, uh, he, he like referred to him like, I forgot what he's, sweetheart or something like that. You know, trying to play, you know, people have said things about Tim being, you know, you know, you know, look, people have said things, but people have said things. People have said similar things about about you, Jamal. So, you know, calm down. Look, calm down <laughs> over there. All right. So the minute that he says this towards Tim, Tim is like, oh, what? You want to F me? Wait, Tim. Like, where did that? <laughs> we were not. Uh, where, where did that come from? And even Jamal was just like, what? Wait, huh? Mm hmm. Uh, exactly. Julie says that Veronica and Jamal were never going to work out. I think we knew that, but I said this before. I really do like Veronica. Um, but now that we're seeing more about Veronica before she was sort of like a side character to Tim's storyline, but now we're getting more of her. I still like her, especially more than any of the people in this quadruple relationship. But I was not expecting this woman, Tim's ex, well, not X. I guess they dated for a hot second to come out and say that it's spilled tea on Veronica. And Veronica was su surprised too. She was like, why are you saying these things? She's like, I don't even speak like that in regards to referring to them as trash. She's like, I don't even use those words. You know, when someone says that, they, they definitely said it. <laughs> she said, you were drunk. You were drunk when you said it, but you said it about Tim and Jamal. Oh, look, oh. Julie, thank you so much for the super chat. Julie says, I wish Debbie would shut would have shut up. Sean's awful <laughs> as the host. Um, I think Sean is really, she's not there to show any sort of personality. She's just there to keep moderating the whole situation. She's there to be the producer's go-to person. She's a journalist. She's not going to give you her opinion. I wish they would allow her to just to really host as opposed to just, one minute we're talking about one conversation, then we're jumping off to the next. All right. Anyway, um, and Jasmine says Veronica definitely said those things. I think so. I think so. But for me, that was like the only standout moment from the 90 day, the single life reunion. All right. Um, was there anything else that I want to say about the 90 day single life reunion? Not really. I'm trying to think if there was, was anything else. Oh, Tyree. Tim, not Tim. John is still there. Not interested, honestly. And then John is on 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. Luckily, he's just a side character, character, character there. Luckily. All right. Uh, let's move on, though. Let's move on. Let's talk about 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. Okay, so we have a new season of 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. I did not expect that we would get so many repeats from last season. Yes, we have some people that we haven't seen in a long time. And look, I don't remember everyone's names <laughs> because literally I just watched this last night. I do see that Michael and Angela will be making an appearance this season. They did not in this episode. Lauren and Alex are going to be coming back this season as well. I actually like them as a couple. I was happy for them. I don't think we needed any sort of update on their story, but I could be wrong. We will watch it together and we will decide. But I, I always liked them as a couple. I was like, unlike some of the 90 Day Fiance stories where you're like, this is going to end ba badly. This ended up pretty nice. They have three kids together. They're still married. They're still going strong. It's been several years. So good for them. We did not need Rob and Sophie. Rob and Sophie were like the central focus of 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After's new season. They're still together. They moved out of California to Texas. But apparently, they're not living together right now. They haven't lived together for a couple of months. I'm watching this and I'm thinking to myself, is this a made-up storyline? Is it a made-up storyline? 
So we don't know what's happening with Sophie and her new friend. Here's the thing. So Sophie's still mad at Rob for having interactions with these women, like really inappropriate interactions. And I said before, I wouldn't have been surprised if she had broken up with him and did not marry him. But for us to come off of 90 Day Fiance just this past season to dealing with the extension of their just non-interesting storyline, uh, uninteresting storyline, I'm just like, I'm... And the majority of this premiere episode was about them. We even get to see her mom again. Her mom's... The sidebar, the mom's like, I barely understand him. I couldn't understand him as well. I thought he was from somewhere else, but apparently he's American. <laughs> I was like, what is he saying? All right. But back to, to Rob and Sophie. So they're still not living together as man and wife. I don't get why <laughs> at this point. You've said I do. You've, you've already dealt with the whole cheating stuff. You look past it. I can't look past Sophie and these bad wigs. And you know, normally, we don't even talk about that stuff. But it's so bad. My thing is, I'm surprised that Rob hasn't called her out for catfishing. Because <laughs> <laughs> when they were showing photos of Rob and her, they were so highly edited. Her hair looked great. Like, everything looked great. Skin looked great. But when you see her in confessionals and you see her in real life, I'm just like... You, Rob, should be mad at her for, for deceit as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, at least be your authentic self. But I thought at least by this season that she would have gotten her looks together. But no, it's still bad. Like, bad, bad. Like, her mama's hair looks better than her hair. But she's wearing wigs. She's wearing wigs. At one point, she's I guess she's wearing, like, an extension ponytail. But then, like, the hair, hair looks all, like, mattered. Mattered. Tattered. Mmm. <laughs> bad. I'm, I, look, I'm surprised that, look, Rob is not a prize either when it comes to his personality. But he's not a bad-looking guy. And I'm like, you are attracted to her oh okay <laughs> look oh, oh okay and it looks like he really wants this marriage to work but they're having their issues like she's annoying to me but i have to remind myself she's 24 years old but again she shouldn't be getting married she shouldn't be getting married oh roro says bad wigs and i do not believe she's rich did they say that she was rich? I think she. they said that she lived a privileged life. I mean, privilege doesn't always mean rich, meaning that people took care of her. She didn't have to take, like, she didn't have to take care of herself. That doesn't mean that she's lived, like, this really, like, luxurious lifestyle. You've seen her mom, right? Okay, so. Does Party City, well, no, Party City sells rigs. Does Dollar Tree sell wigs? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mama Ellie says, mattered referring to the word I just used, equals matted and tattered. Thank you. That must be what my brain was thinking. Thank you, Mama Ali. Speaking of Mama Ali, Mama Ali is keeping our Tuesday Takeover timestamps. And once she sends it to me, and if I remember, I will post them as soon as possible. I know last week they were a little late, but Mama Ali had already sent them to me early. So I'm going to try it right after this live. When she sends, sends it to me, I'm going to include it. Okay? If not, be patient. Please understand I'm busy. Okay, thank you. Um, Nicole says she's probably a trust fund baby. I don't know what she's spending that money on, but all right. Look, all right. All right, whatever. Whatever. All right, guys, you're just joining us. This is our Tuesday takeover. We are talking about 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. We also got to see <sighs> Jasmine and Gina are back. Jasmine and Gina are back. <sighs> Look, I have to say, I don't blame jasmine for being a little perturbed that her um honeymoon is camping because i wouldn't want to do camping either i wouldn't want to do camping either i still don't believe this relationship i believe this relationship is one of convenience she's frustrated because she wants to have a bigger house she wants to move her children from panama here they're talking about having kids together the, if she ends up pregnant i would be very shocked I would be very shocked. You think that Jasmine, after all that work she's done on her body, that she's going to get pregnant now? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Do you guys believe that she's going to? I already just told you last week I was tired of talking about Jasmine and Gino. I did know that they were going to be a part of Happily Ever After. Speaking of people that we're tired of seeing, Big Ed, Big Ed and Liz are going to be on 90 Day Fiance. 
Did they get married? If these two did not get married, 90 Day Fiance producers, what are you doing? First of all, I always already told you, I didn't understand why we were following their relationship when they are both Americans. <laughs> They're both Americans. Gene, it's okay. Please understand, you guys can have a difference of opinion while being here. Gene says, Kemper, I'm so sorry, but dare I say I like Jasmine and Gino. I can see why some people might like Jasmine and Gino because they're a hot mess of express on this show. And I have to say, this episode with them, I didn't mind them as much because she didn't lose it. But we know that that's coming. We know that that's coming. Okay? I don't understand why we're getting Big Ed and Liz. I don't understand why we are getting uh, Angela and Michael. I mean, part of me is kind of interested in Angela and Michael because we followed their story for years. And he has finally made it to the United States. And we saw that story of him escaping from Angela. So I'm a little, I'm a little tiny bit interested. A little bit interested. A small interested. Ashley's back. Ashley the witch is back with her, her boo. All right. And apparently, uh, he's still keeping her a secret from his children. And her family is upset about that. I don't know if I'm even interested in Ashley at, at this time around, to be honest. We're just getting off. Y'all need to. Here's the thing, producers for 90 Day Fiance. We need a break in between. It would be different if we went into 90 Day Fiance the other way and it was a completely different cast, but we're going from 90 Day Fiance with this with the good majority of your cast into 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After, all right? It's a, it's a bit much. We were already done with them. I'm not, what new are they going to show us besides what you're going to produce? This is why for those that want me to host the 90 Day sell, Tell All, they're not gonna make me do it because I'm gonna be breaking the fourth wall. What the hell is wrong with y'all? They need a puppet. They need someone that they... I'm sorry, Sean, but it's true. That's what you do. You're like, okay, let's move on to the next story. Like, you don't dig deep. <laughs> Not dig deep. All right. Um, Jean says, Ashley said, you hide them kids. I'll hide I'll hide this debt. <laughs> because we find out next week she has like 100 k in debt. First of all, Ashley, that better be some school debt. That better be some school debt. I will understand if it's school debt. Okay. But if it's uh, like credit card debt, <laughs> Ashley, what crystals are you buying? Because you know she's into that stuff. Tyra, thank you so much for being a member of the channel for two years. Um, Tyra says, Kempire, sending you blessings and love. And I will take it. Look, because people send you all kinds of other stuff. I will take it, Tyra. And thank you so much for being a member for so long. We appreciate your support. All right. What else did I want to say about 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After? Was there anything else? I mean, we still have a lot more to unpack. We saw a lot of Jasmine and Gino, a lot of, of Sophie and and um, Rob. Um, and we saw a lot of Ashley. We still have more of Angela and Michael. We have Lauren and Alex. We have uh, quite a few different people. Quite a few different... Oh, no, I forgot. Mahmoud. Mahmoud finally made it to the States. He moved from Egypt. I never liked their story. I, I still don't like their story. I thought that they would have broken up. I am honestly shocked that these two are still together. She She's still saying, you know, she wanted him to move there to live a different life. She wants me to be able to show public displays of affection. But he's still, just because he has left his country doesn't mean he's left his principles behind. So I'm sure that will be a major part of the storyline. The way she dresses, the way she acts in public with him. I'll wait and see. There's, I can't believe that they're still married. Can y'all be? I'm surprised. I thought they would have gotten a divorce. I thought they really would have gotten a divorce. All right. I say all that to say, I'm not going to say any more. I'm not going to say any more. I do need to take a little bit of a break, though. I'll be right back. <laughs>
yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not time traveling to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, Julie says that uh, Mahmoud is ridiculous about finding a mosque in L.A. <sighs> we will see. We will see how their relationship plays out during the season. I am still shook that um, that um, that they're even together. That they're even together. Oh, someone told me that the RHOP looks are out. So let me at least pull those up while we are live y'all so let me just pull those up and for those that haven't already be sure to like the video if you're watching um on on youtube all right we got our looks we've got our looks oh and it's a black theme okay i'm already looking at these and i'm like hmm hmm all right let me see if i can um actually pull up the looks for you guys Oh, these are too small. Let me see. Let me see if I can. All right, Giselle. Okay. Look, okay, okay. All right. Let me see if I can pull up these looks for you guys. Let me. Okay, Karen. Look, look, look. Triple 20 over here. Karen looks great, y'all. Look, I mean, and I mean, especially with the. Okay. Let me see if I can pull up these looks for you guys so that you can um see them as well. All right. Give me one second. And see me see if I can pull up these looks. Let me see if I can pull up these looks for you. Okay, let me see. All right, let's do that. Okay, and because that 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 would be a perfect segue from talking about um, ninety day fiance, which was lackluster. Which was lackluster. Where did everything go? I'm like losing everything, y'all. Hold on. Let me move this over. Oh, goodness. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Back to... I, oh, <laughs> someone just said... Oh, wait, hold on. Mama Ali says, it's the season's funeral. Uh, well, that makes sense then. When you think about it, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> that makes perfect sense if that's what if that's the theme of funeral. Yeah, because why black? Where did they go to? Why are we doing black? That's interesting. That is definitely interesting. Why black? All right, let me. Because I can't pull up the individual pictures just yet, y'all, because we are literally live. Um, but I'm going to pull up at least the um, group shots that, that we have. All right. So let's talk a, a little bit about the reunion look. So this is the RHP reunion looks, of course, when I, I will do a separate video probably talking about these reunion looks. Because, you know, I like to look at the different um, people behind each look. All right, let me see if I can, let me zoom this in for us, guys. Let me zoom this in for us. Let me make sure I have everything open. All right, so that way we can kind of, so you guys can see it a little bit. We'll start with the top, ladies, okay? We'll start, and when I say top, meaning literally the top, okay? All right, so Ashley. All right, Ashley is giving us body, one thing, definitely body. This really is giving funeral, all of the um the black I don't know if I love that. I don't love that at all. Um, I don't know how I feel about this look. Again, I have to see it in motion. I got to see the back. I want to look Ashley's hair. I don't love here. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this look. I like the, the, the middle part of her dress. I think the slit is too wide open. And that might be what's throwing me off. Because I feel like it's too much leg showing. Anyone else? It's like too much leg showing. It, I, don't, I don't love this look. I like the, the, the body part of it. I don't really love the train. And I don't love the split. It's so wide open. Okay? All right. Giselle. Giselle's look. I have to say Giselle's hair and makeup look great. The dress feels like it was it was a safe choice because and look with with for someone like Giselle, 
you need to take a safe choice. All right? So I like this look on Giselle. Okay, wait, rewinding back. <laughs> How would you guys rate Ashley's look from 1 to 10? It's not my favorite because Ashley has given us some looks. Ashley has given us some looks for over the years. But this is not my favorite look from Ashley. It's very like something feels unfinished here. I don't know what it is. I, I think the slit might be way too high. Way too high here. But it's not terrible. Like we've seen terrible reunion looks. Um, Kel says Ashley looks overexposed. Yeah, that might be it. I'm going to give Ashley's look a six. It's not my favorite look from Ashley because Ashley has really given us some beautiful reunion moments. But yeah, it's just okay. It's just okay. I really don't love her hair either in this. Okay. Giselle, I think Giselle probably looks the best that we've seen her look in a long time. In a long time. Okay. Um, how would I rate this look? How would you guys rate this look? I definitely think she did better than Ashley. I definitely think that she um, did better than Ashley. Oh, so Amy says, I think it's the pose that Ashley's giving. You might be right, because it gives like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Giselle, I don't think it's bad. I actually think this is probably the best we've seen Giselle, but I think it was also a safe choice. I think Giselle's hair and makeup looks great. I'm going to give Giselle a seven here. I'm going to give Giselle a seven. All right. Robin. Robin sometimes can be hit or miss at a reunion. I don't think this is a bad dress. And it's not even a dress. It's like pants. If you look a little closer, it's like pants, it's like a bodysuit. She almost looks like a superhero when we know she's clearly not one. All right. I don't hate this look, but I don't love this look either. It's sort of giving me a different vibe of Ashley's dress. It's like superhero. Okay. Um, I will give Robin, I, I still like it more than Ashley. So maybe like a six and a half, seven. I hate, I don't really like uh, Robin's makeup either. Cause Robin's makeup has looked great before, but regular Robin, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say she looks regular here. It looks like she was trying to go for edgy. Speaking of edgy. And again, guys, if you're part of the Replay crew, be sure to let us know how you would rate their looks. These are the Real Housewives Potomac Reunion looks just coming in. So, of course, you know we had to go live and talk about them. Um, but we're live anyway. We're doing our Tuesday takeover. <laughs> All right, Karen. Take a look at Miss Karen. I don't love her dress, but I think with her dress, she was taking a risk and giving fashion. She was giving fashion. All right. Um, so, but her hair, her giving a short hair here, this woman is 60 years old. She's giving face. She's giving body. She's showing us a little leg. You see, but look at, okay, look at Ashley giving us leg and Karen giving us leg. Karen is giving us just the right amount of leg. And I think because we also see Ashley's other leg, that's also throwing off this pose. Also, I feel like Karen's pose looks a lot better than Ashley's pose. But what's winning for me is not even Karen's dress. It's the face card and the hair. All right? Karen's hair is giving me life. I'm giving Karen a nine. I'm giving Karen a nine. All right? What were you guys, how would you guys rate these looks. How would you rate these looks? All right. Let's take a look at the ladies, not at the bottom, but literally at the bottom when I'm when I'm looking at this photo. OK. All right. So this for those that are just joining us, we're talking about the Real Housewives of Potomac season eight reunion looks. All right. We've got our girl, Wendy Acefo. Someone said that maybe the reason why they're wearing all black is in honor of um, Giselle's father. You know, he passed during the season. So maybe that's why they're wearing all black. I mean, I don't mind all black. I just want, I, I kind of wanted to know, you know, why the theme, you know, what was the theme? All right. So Dr. Wendy Acefo, I mean, to me, this is giving very like almost very like classic, very 
I love the fact that there's a theme because, you know, we talk about other housewife cities that don't give us a theme. I like this. I like the gloves. I like the little spot of color. I don't know if I love the necklace. I kind of want to see her without the necklace and see what that would give or maybe a smaller necklace. I want to see that. I don't love that. I think the necklace is throwing me off. I think if we had like maybe a smaller necklace, it would be pretty. I don't love her hair here. But again, we, we're only seeing one angle. It might look better from the side, her hair. I don't love her hair here. I like the dress. I think hair and makeup, I think makeup looks great. Hair, I don't love in this picture. I will just want to point out in this picture. All right? But I think she's giving very classy. <laughs> look, look, very classy. And I like it. I think this is definitely, she took a risk. And that's where I feel like Giselle did not take a risk with her look. And I appreciate her not taking a risk because, you know, if she did take a risk, <laughs> y'all would have been like, <laughs> here she go again. All right. Jean says that Wendy's giving rich. Yeah. I mean, I like it. I really do like it. Uh, Simone says Wendy. Eight. I'm going to give Wendy an eight as well. Did I give um, Karen a rating? I gave her a nine. Yes, I gave Karen a nine. I will say this. I like what I'm seeing on Candace. Candace is proving proving me wrong in, in regards to what I said about Ashley. I thought maybe because Ashley was showing the other leg that it was kind of throwing me off. No, I maybe it's just the cut. Maybe it's the pose that Ashley was giving. But I like Candace's look here. I like her hair and makeup. I like I like the dress. It's sexy. She can pull it off. I even like the pose with the microphone. Is she performing at the reunion? I wonder. I like it. I like this look. I think she took a little bit of a risk, not a major risk. It's giving very lingerie. She has she has a very petite, you know, figure. I I like this look on Candace. I'm gonna give Candace an eight and a half, I think. An eight or eight and a half. How would you guys rate Candace's look? I like her look. I like it. I think she looks pretty. All right. All right. Let's talk about Mia B Lion. <laughs> let's get let's talk about Mia. All right. So Mia's look. Mia's look for this reunion. I don't mind it because, again, she's someone that's taking a risk. To me, her dress looks like a piece of art. And I can appreciate that. She's showing a lot of skin. She's in her new, you know, uh, single era. All right. She's in her new single era. I don't love her makeup, but I think her makeup is kind of going with the theme of the dress. The dress to me looks like a long piece of hair tied around over and over again. It's actually really cool looking. I want to see it in motion. And I always say this about the reunion looks. Sometimes we um, we see it and then we're like, ah, I don't know about this. I don't know about this look. I don't know if this is working. You know what I mean? But I think this looks like a piece of art. I'm going to give Mia's a look, an eight and a half, maybe even. The only reason why I'm not going to give Mia as high as Karen, even though I feel like Karen, too, was trying to be uh, take a risk and do something artistic. Again, I want to see these in motion because I think that will make a big difference on the look and my rating. All right. But I kind of like Mia's look. And I like the fact she pulled her hair back. I like the fact she did not put on a necklace. It kind of makes me wonder what Dr. Wendy Acefo's look would have been like without the necklace. But again, I want to see Dr. Wendy's outfit in person. Not in person, but like in motion. All right? So I'm going to give Mia B. Lion. <laughs> I'm going to give her an eight and a half. I'm, I'm inching towards a nine. And when I review this for TikTok, I might give her a nine because I'm going to probably see better pictures of these looks. All right. And last and definitely not least, well, some of y'all might. You know. 
Guys, if you're just joining us, we are talking about the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion looks for season eight. They were just released, so it wasn't a part of our docket for Tuesday Takeover, but we're adding it. We're adding it to the docket. Shout out to those of you that let me know that that it was available. So I wanted to talk a little bit about it. All right. And shout out to our friends over on Twitter. Love Andy C. This is where we're getting it from because you know what we do here. We always cite our sources. Cite our sources. All right. Back to the reunion looks. NECA. So this is NECA's look. Look. Um, I don't hate it. I don't not love it either. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> she was giving us a risk. She was taking a risk. Again, when we talk about art, I feel like she was trying to give us an almost artsy moment. I do like her hair. I do like her hair. I'm glad she did not wear a necklace. I'm glad she didn't because I feel like that would have ruined this look. Her makeup looks good. And that's one of the biggest criticisms a lot of people have had about NECA is sometimes her makeup is not on point. I remember she was on Watch What Happens Live and Watch, Watch What Happens Live and her makeup looked a lot better there. This last episode or last week's episode, her makeup wasn't looking great. I think her makeup looks very subtle here. I like the hair. I think the dress is nice. I don't think the, the dress is terrible. And I appreciate her taking a risk. And this being her first season, not bad. I'm going to give this a seven and a half. I think this is not a bad look. Good job, NECA. Look. Uh, Foxy says, but the hair is boring. Oh, damn. <laughs> look, oh, damn. How would you guys rate it, though? How would you rate the reunion looks for the Real Housewives of Potomac? Let me know in the live chat and let me know in the replay crew comment section. So be sure to let us know. All right. Um, did I have any more thoughts on these reunion looks before I, I, I'm done with them? Uh, did I have a favorite? <sighs> okay. I'll pick a favorite from the bottom half and then I'll pick a favorite from the, the top half. Okay. So from the bottom half, my favorite look, I'm honestly, oh, this is tough because I like them for different reasons. So I like Wendy's because, because Wendy's is classic, but I like Mia's look because she took a risk and I like that it's almost artsy, it almost looks like hair wrapped around itself. So that I like them for different reasons. And I even like Candace's look. But Candace's look for me it just seems like she didn't really take a risk. So I'm gonna go with Mia because Mia's taking a risk. All right. I'm gonna go with Mia because I feel like Mia is taking a risk in the in the uh photo. In, in the look, period. All right, who who for you on the bottom half is your favorite? All right, let me take a look at the top half. Let me take a look at the top half of the Re Real Housewives of Potomac reunion looks. Let's see. All right. Of the top half, it's definitely not um Ashley. Sorry, <laughs> Ashley. It's definitely not <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> Rain of April says, Kemp, you are so nice. Oh. <laughs> look, look. All right, I'm sorry. Hands down for me, the top half. And honestly, I don't hate Karen's dress. I don't love it either. I appreciate it. For me, it's giving Tina Turner Thunderdome. That's what it's giving me. Avant-garde. Tina Turner Thunderdome. <laughs> that, that's what it's giving me. For, for me, in this top half, and probably for the entire group, it's Karen. Because Karen, just that that hair, that makeup, that pose, even the dress I'm loving because of the look. And now that I can think of, of, of the Thunderdome, maybe this was her ode to Tina Turner. May she rest in peace. Karen. Yes. <laughs> Barry says, Mad Max, come on. Yes. Karen wins it for me. <laughs> Karen wins it all. Karen wins it all. And it's not because she's a Taurus. Okay. Oh, maybe. Maybe. It might be. No. It, the look was looking. All right. Let's move on because we still have so much to unpack when it comes to our Tuesday takeover. We're going to move on from the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion looks. Let's move on to a hot topic. Let's move on to a hot topic. Uh, Kate Middleton. Guys, last week we talked about Kate Middleton and the Photoshop photo, okay? We talked about this Photoshop photo, 
and we still were not able to make out um, where she stole the photo from. <laughs> we're not stole the photo from where, where exactly this photo may have come from. Remember I said uh, people were speculating that it was from her Vogue cover. I said the old magazine cover, <laughs> <laughs> but Kate, if people have been speculating that she's missing in action, first of all, some people felt like Kate got a BBL and that's why she's been hiding. Some people feel have speculated that she might be dead. Oh, I haven't fought. You, you know, look in, in my work, line of work, speculation is a lot, but I don't know if I believe anything. I just feel like the Royal family is just so old school and they're not handling the PR situation of it all. Well, of course, conveniently, because people have been speculating that these photos and these stories about Kate are not real. They feel like something's going on and that the royal family's not telling us. So, of course, this week we got some footage. I can't share the footage with you because I'm sure it's owned. So we can't show you the, the, the footage. All right. But a lot of people are also saying that this is not Kate. What do you guys believe? Patricia says it's still not Kate. Vinek, uh, Vineka says, that's not Catherine. I'm like, look, we have to keep in mind, apparently she was ill. So that might explain the weight loss. But people are zooming in on the photo and are saying, that is not Kate Middleton. Hashtag not Kate. Mo says, not, that's not Kate. And Kiara says, don't you need a little, a little fat for a BBL? <laughs> I don't I that well that goes to say like a lot of the speculation has been outlandish but I've seen so many videos on timelines of Kate and where she's been and things are not making sense so there is still speculation on is this the real Kate Middleton you know people were not happy with the photo of her inside um the car with William last week and people are saying that that wasn't her Scherster says, it's Kate, but we still have a lot of questions. I agree with Scherster. I believe that that photo is Kate and that video footage. Remember, that's video footage, too. It's not just a photo. We can't show you the video footage. I believe that's Kate, but I do believe that there's more to the story. I believe that they're not telling us the full situation. Just saying. I believe it's, they're not giving us the full story. Exactly. Christina says, she's skinnier. Apparently, she was very ill. And she's not supposed to return to her duties for a while. For maybe like a, more, a couple more months, right? Or, or April or something like that. Next month. Beautiful Gem says, I'm so baffled. Me too. But I think people love conspiracy theories. So that's why these have been running rampant. Of course, the royal family does not like conspiracy theories about them. So there's speculation that William has had has gotten someone else pregnant that he's been having an affair on her some people are speculating that kate is the one um trying to to kind of throw the the royal family under the bus with the speculation oh amy says i need on camera saying she's okay and needs more time well all of you said this too remember not too long ago about jamie fox remember that All right. Just wanted to just wanted to get you give you guys an update on the Kate Middleton of it all. Guys, don't forget we will be taking our show, our live show on the road. We will be in Boston in May, we'll be in Nashville and Atlanta in July, and then we will be in Seattle in August. Head on over to the, to the description for more details on the Kempire After Dark live show. Get your tickets now. Don't wait till the last minute. Plan your your trip, plan your 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 night out now. All right. Thank you to everyone that has come out to our New York City show, our DC show, and our Philly show. All right. Let's move on. Let me take a sip of my cashew butter. Hold on. Mm. Uh, Romo says, if that's Kate, why is she not working? Well, maybe she needs some time to recoup. Come on now. Maybe she needs some time to recoup. All right. Be a little bit more sensitive, y'all. Be a little bit more sensitive. All right. <laughs> Speaking of some pop culture news, uh, Oprah. 
So Oprah is back in the headlines. So Oprah has this special that's coming out on ABC. All right. Oprah has this special coming out on ABC. And this is what US Today is writing in regards to this special. They wrote this. Hold on. Let me take this down so you guys can see me. Okay. So they say this. Oprah has some choice words for those who critiqued her weight for decades. She says, I have to say that I took on the shame that the world gave me for 25 years. Making fun of my weight with, was a national sport, Oprah said on an Oprah special, Shame, Blame, and the Weight Loss Revolution, which aired Monday night on ABC. Winfrey recalled the cover of the TV Guide calling her bumpy, lumpy, and downright dumpy in 1990 and read out headlines over the years that obsessed over her appearance. She says, I come to this conversation with the hope that we can start releasing the stigma and the shame and the judgment to stop shaming other people for being overweight or how they choose to lose or not lose weight. And most importantly, to stop shaming others, the media mogul said. Oprah added, in an effort to combat all the shame, I starved myself for nearly five months and then wheeled out that wagon of fat. Y'all remember. Uh, sidebar. Another thing, Jalen Green, you know, uh, Drea Michelle's baby's father and boyfriend. Another thing that he won't, he, he won't, he'd be like, what? I never saw this. Unless he saw it in a, in a meme. Another thing, last week you guys had so much fun in the Tuesday Takeover comment section pointing out all the things that Jalen Green, based off his 2002 birth date, uh, that he would not know about, okay? So this is a moment in, in time on the Oprah Winfrey show that he would not remember. She said, I starved myself for nearly five months and then wheeled out that wagon of fat that the internet will never let me forget. And after losing 67 pounds on a liquid diet the next day, y'all, the very next day, I started to gain it back. <sighs> so Oprah, uh, in the Monday night special, Winfrey spoke with medical experts and guests who have taken weight loss medications and experienced drastic physical and mental changes, most, mostly positive, though some negative. Winfrey, who in December admitted to using weight loss medication, empathized with the guests who shared why they turned to prescription medications, which we're not going to name here, all right, because there are multiple outside of the OZ, okay, that's what we're going to refer to it as. Uh, she continues, she says, this is what I got for, got for the first time after I took the medication. All these years, I thought all the people who never had to diet were just using their willpower, and they were for some reason stronger than me. She says, and now I realize y'all weren't even thinking about the food. It's not that you had the willpower. You weren't uh, obsessing about it. Again, starting with your mind. She says, in taking the weight loss medication, the former uh, talk show host revealed, I'm not constantly thinking about what the next meal is going to be. She uses it in combination with hiking three to five miles a day. So that's important to, for her to know. That she's hiking three to five miles a day. So she is being active. All right. And they do say, Dr. Jackie just said this on the Married to Medicine reunion, that people don't realize you also have to change your lifestyle. You also have to change your lifestyle along with this. Okay. She says, oh, I just lost my article. Please hold. <laughs> there we go. Uh, she, Winfrey got choked up as she spoke with a woman who participated in her The State of the Weight panel last year and ho whose relationship with food completely changed after starting a weight loss medication. There is now a sense of hope and you no longer blame yourself, she said. When I tell you how many times I have blamed myself because you think I'm smart enough to figure this out and then to hear all along it's, it's, you, it's you fighting your brain. And when you think about Oprah, who has billions of dollars, the fact that she still has a struggle with this says a lot, that it's a serious struggle. It's a real struggle for people. Winfrey signed off acknowledging medication might not be for everyone. She says, for people who feel happy and healthy and celebrating life in a bigger body and don't want the medications, I say bless you. And for all the people who believe diet and exercise is the best and only way to lose excess weight, bless you too if that works for you. And for all the people who think that this could be relief and support and freedom that you've been looking for your whole life, bless you because there are spaces for all points of view. And I feel like that is the theme of our channel. There are spaces 
for all points of view. All right. Oprah also recently stepped down from the board of Weight Watchers because a conflict of interest, a conflict of interest because of the way that she has decided to lose weight. And I also think it's important to note that we literally probably over a year ago, we had someone call in and talk about the OZ and how a lot of diabetic patients are not able to to get access to that particular um, medication because of the overuse of OZ by celebrities and people in general. But it should also be noted that there are other weight loss medications that people are using. As always, with any sort of medication, you should always seek your doctor's advice. There are uh, effects that you 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 know um, that you will be dealing with. And again, I I don't I always go by the whole premise: your body, your choice. If you're doing it the legal way, fine, fine. I'm not going to sit here and judge you either or, as long as you are happy, healthy, and you know, talking with your doctor. And following what your doctor tells you. All right. I wanted to talk a little bit about that because Oprah has been a lot in the news this week. Um, all right. Can we talk? Let me just briefly talk about the Love is Blind. <laughs> we jump around for Tuesday take, Takeover for those that are just joining us. Let's talk about Love is Blind. So the Love is Blind reunion happened last week. I watched it. It was an hour and 37 minutes. An hour and 37 minutes. And this was, supposed, this was supposed to be a reunion for season six, but it felt like a reunion for all of the seasons because they brought back all, not everyone, you know, people like Lauren and, and her husband were not there. I, I feel like if you're going to have a reunion, you need to have them there, okay? Um, but they weren't able to make it. However, we it was nice to get a, a, a an update on everyone. We got a couple of people that are pregnant, a couple of people that are in new relationships. Um, but at the same time, it felt like we focused so much on the past that we didn't pay enough attention to season six. Like that whole situation with Kenny and um, where's Kenny? Where's Kenny? Do I have my picture of Kenny here? Yeah, Kenny, Kenny and his and his wife, well, not wife, his girlfriend, his well, now friend. The, she literally made a comment talking about, "Oh, finally we we get to have our moment because the majority of the reunion, we barely spoke to them. I wanted to get a better understanding on why he was so, so flaky and then always on his phone." He says that, you know, his school, he's a principal, they rely on him. No, come on, sir. That was such a lame excuse. That was such a lame excuse. I was just like, that is your excuse because you're a principal. You had to be on your phone when she's trying to have a conversation with you. Well, sir, then you need to figure that out because no one's going to want to put up with that. No one's going to want to put up with that, that you're prioritizing your um, your school and your job over your relationship. I feel like he shut down completely in that relationship. And the fact that she's been able to look past it and still be his friend I wouldn't even want to be his friend, to be honest with you. To be honest. But we got like a hot, hot second of them. Honestly, the villains were Jeremy and Sarah Ann. <laughs> they were the villains. Because now they're back together, apparently, according to Megan Fox. I mean, Chelsea. <laughs> All right. According to her, they've broken up multiple times. Laura wasn't there, but she zoomed in. And she got them together real quick. And I love that. I love the friendship between Laura and Jess. Because she was there to, to you know, um, ride for her friend. And apparently, it looks like the cast all get along outside of Jeremy and Sarah Ann. Jeremy and Sarah Ann are now together and living together. Okay. Jeremy threw Jimmy under the bus, basically wanting to look like the like a good guy and he's just like he he was okay with Jimmy taking the heat and Jimmy was just like wow not him catching strays during <laughs> during one of the throwback conversations that Laura had with Sarah Ann 
And Jimmy also pointed out that Jeremy, in I guess in the pods, made a or not even maybe in, in the pods, but made a comment to to Jimmy in a very similar manner. So you definitely said it. And then you made an apology to Jimmy saying, if I said that, he's like, I don't remember saying that. If I said that, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> that was such a housewives uh, apology. If I said that, if I made you feel that way, sir. Jeremy is trash. Jeremy is trash. Sarah Ann, you are trash. You, you guys are good for each other. All right. Y'all are good for each other. Point blank, period. And none of the cast seem to like them. None of the cast seem, seem to like them. Oh, my goodness. Do I have a picture of Trey? Uh, Trey. Trevor. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. That's, uh, well, congratulations to J Johnny and, and Amy. They also did not get enough light <laughs> during this reunion. They got a little bit more than Kenny and, and, his, and his girl. Uh, but Trevor... I did not see this Trevor situation because I haven't been following all the tea on online in regards to, you know, people and their stories. But apparently Trevor had a whole girlfriend going into the situation, told the girlfriend that he was going into the situation. He could not even answer for himself. Nick Lachey is trying to get him together. It's like, you know, people are signing up for this because they really want to find the love of their lives. And you literally are not. Chelsea could have easily chosen you, and then what would have happened? He had no words. He's like, can I leave? Sir. <laughs> I did not expect that from, from Trevor. This is why people have trust issues. This is why people end up on shows like this. They have trust issues because there are people like Trevor having full-on relationships and coming on to Love is Blind. <coughs> I don't get it. And I don't, I don't get it. it. Was I did not expect that moment for from the reunion with Trevor. He's like, "Can I leave, sir?" <laughs> Nick was like, "I know you asked to leave. You can leave now," because he had no answers. He really had no answers or a real legitimate excuse. And then try to make it seem like, well, if if Chelsea had chosen me, we would have been good. No, you literally get out of this experience and you're texting the woman that you were texting before you got into the experience. And then you're referring to that relationship as toxic. But that's the first person that you text. Uh, Jasmine says too many sneaky links on reality television. Uh, Danny says he couldn't handle the pressure. Uh, Foxy says, I thought he was. A me too. We all thought he was a good man. Shay says, uh, Kempire, they were dragging Trevor, saying that he walked off the stage when he couldn't take the heat, looking like a Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> I mean, look, he, he did. He did. I, I am shocked that Trevor actually showed up to this reunion. What was he thinking? That, to me, is, is the example of when we talk about narcissistic behavior. The fact that he decided he had no legitimate excuse and he knew that this information was out there. He knew that they were going to talk about it during the reunion. And he still showed up to the reunion. If you're dating Trevor, run. <laughs> run. It doesn't make sense to me. You would show up to this reunion and not have a legitimate answer. Why even show up? You didn't have to show up. He shows up, still has no legitimate answer. Okay. <laughs> Look, all right. Uh, Rahina says he did let us down. He did. But at the same time, look. So Chelsea and Jimmy, I also feel like we didn't get to the nitty gritty of their relationship. Right? Don't, don't you guys feel like that? I feel like we still did not get to the nitty gritty of their relationship. They talked about the Megan Fox of it all. I think they spent too much time on the throwback of the past seasons. I, I wanted to get a better idea as to are Ch Jimmy and Chelsea even still together? I know we, we've seen photos of them uh, still hanging out, but at this particular point during the filming of this reunion, are they still together? They seem very affectionate with each other. They seem like they're in a good place. Maybe I missed it when they confirmed that they were still together, but there was so much happening in this reunion about the past. I'm like, okay. Oh, gosh. AD and Clay. Again, another couple, I feel like if we spent this time talking about season six, we would probably would have 
gotten some closure on everyone's situation, but it feel like we brushed over season six. I wonder what the season six cast feels about the reunion, the final edit of the reunion. Do they feel like their stories were kind of brushed over because we were talking about so many of the past uh, folks? Apparently, Clay still wants to be with AD, but she's not trying to trying to go there. But rumor has it that they've been seen together as well. Maybe he didn't give up. I just can't forget what Clay said to AD in the very beginning of this Love is Blind process. He wants to know what she looks like. You signed up for Love is Blind. You knew that you, yes, you didn't see the past seasons, but you knew what you were signing up for, that you weren't going to see the person that you are about to get into a relationship with. I I won't ever forget that. And to me and to anyone that watching this, that is a red flag. When you when people show you who they are the first time, believe them. Yes, Clay, it looks like he's trying to fight to be in a relationship with AD, but let's be real. He showed his true colors. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. And this reunion did not change my mind about Clay. And I'm glad AD didn't doesn't seem like she's with him, at least at this reunion. I don't know what the present state of that situation is. <sighs> Look, was there anything else that I want to say about Love is Blind? Not really. Not really. All right. Are you guys watching the, the latest season of The Traders UK? I am loving it. If you are in the UK or outside of the US and you've watched it already, please no spoilers. Do not spoil it for us. We already, based off of last week, they got rid of Ash. Ash is all the way at the top in this photo and she's in the pink. They found out that she was a traitor. Um, of course, um, what was it? Paul and Harry voted against her and she was completely shocked. You know, traitors, tra you know, they, they, Trade, they trade on you. <laughs> they become traitors. So I wasn't completely surprised, but she definitely was surprised that they turned on her. I am really loving the Traders UK because it gives you a different energy because none of these folks are famous. None of these folks have been on reality television. Okay. I don't love the fact that we're seeing the same competitions that we just watched on the Traders US. But the, the competitions are a little different because these folks are just doing it differently. Some people are just better at doing these types of competitions. When we were watching the Traders US, we have people that literally do physical competitions as a part of their reality TV experience. But I also like the fact that the host of Traders UK, she, she's a different energy. We With Alan Cummings, he's very like... I don't know, like she's dark, but she also gets into the competitions. Like she's rooting for people. She's saying, come on, you know, pick up, the, you know, pick it up. Let's go. Um, but Alan doesn't necessarily do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Again, for those that haven't seen the first six episodes, we have. So if you don't want any spoilers, all right, I'm about to give you a spoiler. So not only um, was Ash, you know, banished from the from the castle we had anthony banished and we found out that anthony anthony's all the way in the back he's the black guy all the way in the back um he was banished because they thought he was a traitor okay but they also thought that zach who has the glasses is a traitor because of the way that he acts and some people say either zach is a terrible traitor or he is just a terrible um a, a faithful as well he's just a, a terrible faithful okay um, so a, quite a few people, have, I can't remember everyone's name. Some people's names are not important. All right. They also got rid of the psychic medium. <laughs> they got rid of her. The traders got rid of the psychic medium and everyone was like, why did they get rid of her? I don't know. I can't remember their reasoning. Uh, I, we told you last week that, um, Ross and Diane, Diane is here. Diane is the, the older woman with the short hair and her son wear, wearing glasses is there. I think if people looked a little bit closer, they could see Diane and Ross, but they're not. They're not. But they think that Diane and Paul are actually um, related. Paul is so sinister, but Paul made a terrible move in episode six. 
He made a terrible move in episode six because he basically told on himself to Jazz. Jazz, I don't have a, do I have a separate photo of Jazz? I don't think so. I will get one for next week. But Jazz is the one on the right in the, I think that's a leather jacket, like a white jacket. He's in a white jacket. Okay. Um, he is brilliant. Th this is what I love because as you watch the game continue, you start to see how people play the game. And Jazz, Paul knows that Jazz is onto him, so he pulls him to the side after their 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 last round table, and it's just like, I want us to get on, on the right page. Paul, that was your worst move because you made it very obvious that you're guilty of something. And Jazz put two and two together because he found out that Harry told Paul information that Jazz had shared. So he's just like, why did Harry re reveal that information? So Jazz may have just figured out two traitors. We also get to learn a little bit more about his own personal story. He says that his father is a very accomplished man, a very powerful man. He always aspired to be like his father, only to find out that his father had a separate family. Really? <laughs> Jazz is one to watch, though. I have to say, I did. I, I sort of saw him in the game, and I'm like, okay. But this last episode, Jazz proved to me, oh, oh, he's on to Paul. Paul is very popular with the group. He notices that. Paul notices that Jazz doesn't trust him, but he thinks that he and Jazz are on the same page now, now that he's had a conversation. But no, you made Jazz even more suspicious. And now you've even exposed Harry. And Harry's the young, young kid. Do I have my picture of Harry? Here we go. Harry's the young kid. I don't know. I think Paul may have just ruined your game, Harry. And I don't know if Paul did that intentionally. I don't know if Paul was trying to do a Dan. Like, I wouldn't even want to be friends with Paul in real life. Just the way that he moves, he navigates this game. It's a little sinister. It's a little sinister. I know it's a game, but the way he navigates this game makes me kind of look at him like, okay, sir. All right. <laughs> a mess. Okay. All right, shout out to, wow, we have quite a few people watching on, on Twitter. Hey, Twitter, we appreciate you being here for our Tuesday Takeover. This is where we cover a variety of reality TV, but reality TV news as well, and pop culture news. We're briefly talking about The Traitors UK Season 2. I'm already on Episode 6. They've released the first six episodes of The Traitors UK. I believe next week or the following week, they will be releasing the uh, Australia a season as well. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, was there anything else that I want to say about the Traders UK? If I, if I, if there is, I'll let you guys know. I, I think this is a, a good season so far. It's different. Yes, similar uh, challenges. Not similar, exact, <laughs> exact challenges. But it's still interesting to watch, especially because all of these folks, we don't know. All these folks are not celebrities. All right. Let me just tell you something. Oh, we never talked about Mia Culpa. So when I was in Philly, one of the movies that I watched when I was in the hotel room was Mia Culpa. You know, I love me some Kelly Rowland. I finally got to watch Mia Culpa, despite some of you saying, don't watch it. Don't waste your time. Some of you are saying, no, watch it. Watch it. So I watched it. Beautiful gowns. No. <laughs> Thankfully... Thankfully, Kelly Rowland did not use whatever wig stylist that Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry normally uses or stylist that Tyler Perry normally uses. However, and, for, and honestly, um, uh, Kelly, her acting wasn't bad. Despite the script, despite it feeling, uh, I don't know what it felt like. It wasn't a good movie. Would I suggest people go watch it? No. <laughs> I'm not gonna even twerk on a fence. No, I'm not gonna. I, I'm no. It wasn't a good movie. Do I think that our girl Kelly has a future in acting? I do. I think this is great prep for her for the Donna Summer biopic. However, <laughs> that movie was not great. It wasn't great. Yes, there are holes in it. But, uh, like sloppy hole. No, damn, not. Uh, I wish this was Kevin after dark. 
Miranda says the sex scene was the best part. It was. It was beautiful. But you know, that's not a reason to watch the movie. And both characters were be beautiful. Okay? Beautiful. But if you're really looking for something, if you just want something to play on in the background, fine. But... <laughs> I, I, the biggest thing that stood out to me, I was like, because I was nervous, you know, especially when singers turn into actors or you know, whatever. I was a little concerned about Kelly. I, I didn't think that Ke Kelly didn't. I, I think Kelly did pretty well. I think she did pretty well for her first, not her first time acting, but you get what I'm saying. I think it was a good warm up. I think it's a good warm up. But no, the storyline, the holes in the storyline. No, <laughs> no. Hey, baby, behave yourself. <laughs> oh, Malibu Surfer says Kelly Rowland is, is so beautiful. She really is. She really is. But also, like, her energy, like, her personality makes her even more beautiful. Yes, she's stunningly gorgeous physically, but her personality makes you like her even more. And I'm looking forward to her finally doing the Dinah Summer biopic. They haven't officially announced it, but the family says that they would love for her to play, play Donna. So I think this is this is a great move for Kelly Rowland. And Kelly, make sure that you are also a producer on on the, the biopic. Let me give her business tips. She knows what she's doing. All right. <laughs> Just say, so I did watch Mia Copa. I say all that to say, why did I bring up Mia Copa? Oh, I know why. Because as I was watching one of my new favorite shows on Hulu, Black Cake, I said to my, this is quality writing. <laughs> Yes. Quality writing. And I told you my connection to this story, of course, is this is based in, uh, it's based off of a, off of, of a book. But, uh, and Oprah is also one of the producing partners for this, this, this series on, on uh, Hulu. And the way that it ends, I'm not going to tell you how it ends because I finally got to watch all of it. It was so beautifully done. I did not expect some of the twists and turns that were made in this story. But I tell you, I'm, I'm, I feel a connection to the story because I didn't grow up in Jamaica, but I have, of course, Jamaican roots. My grandmother, very much like Covey in this story, is um, half black and half Chinese. So it kind of made me think, oh, is, is this how my grandmother grew up? Uh, obviously, you know, she wasn't involved in a murder. <laughs> Doesn't mean, look, that wasn't a spoiler because you have to see who exactly was involved in that murder. But that's part of the reason why Covey has to leave Jamaica and head on over to Europe only for her to get caught up in a lot of drama, a lot of drama. I, I, I could tell you a lot about this story, but I feel like it would spoil the story for you because I don't want I want you to kind of go through the journey, the highs, the lows, the surprises, the twists, the turns for Black Cake. It's available on Hulu. It's it was superbly written, superbly acted, and it ended in a way that left the door open for a season two. So I'm looking forward to that. You can watch it on Hulu, like I mentioned. Again, they're not paying me. I just think, literally, as I was watching it, I was like, this is exactly why quality writing is important, and that's exactly what we didn't get in Mia Culpa. All right. Uh, Rain of April says, same here, Kemp. I haven't been to Jamaica, but have roots and ties. I've been to Jamaica, but I didn't grow up there. And I feel like that is a difference uh, because I'm the only one of my siblings that did not grow up in Jamaica. And I felt even more of a connection realizing that Covey is biracial and, and my grandmother w was biracial as well. So there, there is a, you know, a connection that I, I watch and it makes me wonder, like, what was my grandmother's journey in Jamaica and her thoughts and her feelings? Because also the thing with uh, black folks as well, they don't really share their thoughts, their experiences or or pass down their stories about about the past. Not not not. A, I think that that's in Caribbean culture, but I also think that's in black culture as well. They don't really share all of that, all of that. So I thought Black Cake was fa fantastically written, directed, produced. It's beautifully um, filmed as well. I mean, we're going from Jamaica to the islands, and then we're in Europe, and then we're in the States, and we're meeting uh, the main character, Covey's, who also goes by the name Eleanor. You'll find out why she goes by the name Eleanor if you watch it. <laughs> 
um, we we follow her children, all right? And then we get, I forgot what episode it is, and we find out some more shocking news. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. All right. Anyways, for those that are wondering, I saw someone ask the question about the book versus the movie. We always know the book is always better. So I look forward to reading the book. <laughs> I look forward to the reading book. If you're part of the Replay crew and you've watched Black Cake on Hulu or if you've read the book, let us know your thoughts in the comments section. All right, moving on. Latavia, I love it when you come in and you post the 1111 wherever you are. Uh, I believe you're in L.A., so you probably are, um, or not L.A., but on the West Coast. So I love 1111. Y'all already know. It was 211 here in New York, so I'll take that too. All right. Um, let me say thank you because we got a, cu a couple of super chats. Rahina, thank you so much for the super chat. Rahina says, maybe black because Giselle's dad's passing. Uh, in regards to the RA2P reunion looks. Thank you, Rahina. I was thinking that as well. Maybe that that that's what it was. Mama Ali, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Mama Ali says, two men enter, one man leave. Tina. <laughs> Tina from Mad Max. <laughs> uh, Crystal, thank you so much for the super chat. Crystal says, I'll be on travel uh, and can't wait to see you in Boston since I couldn't see you in D.C. I love that, Crystal. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I love, 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 love that. Yeah, so I'll be in Boston, guys, May 30th. May 30th, we will be in Boston for the Kempire After Dark live show. I haven't been to Boston in years. The last time I went to Boston was for their gay pride. And that was over a decade ago. Over a decade. So I'll have to get to Boston early to kind of enjoy Boston. M. Smith, thank you so much for the super chat. M says, I wanted them to address the revenge. Mm. Uh, wait. Oh, in regards to the Love is Blind reunion. Hmm. I mean, I just felt like they focus way too much on the past seasons. You have an hour and a half. A lot of people are not watching. You could have did a whole separate special talking about the past. <laughs> we didn't need that for this. Tina, thank you so much for the super chat. Tina, Tina says, did you see Clay and his mom on Tamron Hall? I did. I saw. Did I see? I saw a clip. I didn't get to see the entire interview. But I love the mom. I love uh, Clay's mom. I don't necessarily love him, but I do love Clay's mom, and I love what we got at the season finale for Love is Blind Season 6. Thank you so much for the uh, Super Chats, guys. Don't forget, you can also support the channel just by liking the video, following us on other platforms. For those that follow us on TikTok, make sure you're following us on Instagram. Make sure you're following us here on YouTube. Um, you're getting long-form content here. We're also streaming live on tic uh, Twitch and Twitter. We have quite a few people watching on Twitter right now. Hey, Twitter. And, uh, and on uh, Twitch. And, of course, we have our, our folks watching on YouTube. All right. Uh, Malibu Surfer says, Nick and Vanessa are not good hosts. I was going to ask you guys that. I was going to ask you, how, how did you guys feel about that? All right. All right. Let me look at my list of things that I want to talk about. Let's briefly talk about Below Deck. And all I have to say about Below Deck is I love Frasier. And here's why I love Frasier. Cat has been struggling this season. This cat, cat, she's she's a, a stew, third stew, I think. She struggled this season. All right. Speaking of struggling, we already assumed based off of this photo that we were not going to get a full season with Jared. Jared is fired. He was fired in this last episode of Below Deck. I wasn't I wasn't surprised. How do you guys feel about him being fired? I think it was warranted, but when Captain Carey asked um, uh, Barbie whether or not she felt threatened, I was sort of like, I felt like he was looking for something. He was looking for a reason. It's part of his job, especially because of things that have happened in just like I think last season. Why you would ask a question like that? And it was an important question to ask. She said that she didn't feel threatened, but it was like the line of questioning about everyone else. It was like he was trying to build a case against Jared. It also felt like Carrie, when he said that he heard Jared from like two floors up, I was like, y'all, you did not hear him from two floors up. But maybe he did. Look, maybe he did. But this is a this is a big yacht, y'all. This was a big yacht. And I'm not making excuses for Jared because Jared wasn't really great at his job. <laughs> but there was something about Carrie's behavior that felt like he felt like he needed to do something this season. And I think Carrie is a good captain, like professionally speaking. I think he's a good captain and dealing with people and 
you know, paying attention to people's needs. All right. Um, but I don't know something about that particular line of questioning of the crew. I, I don't know if it was warranted for Jared to get fired at that point. At that point, maybe it was because he did have a lot of screw ups. He did have a lot of screw ups. And I think maybe the last straw for Captain Carey was the fight between Kyle and and um, Jared. All right. Tika says that Jared was sloppy. He was definitely sloppy. He was also drunk. He was also drunk when he was yelling at, at Kyle. And Kyle is his subordinate. And that that's never okay. I just don't know if I believe 100% that Carrie heard him from two floors up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Maybe he did. Because I also don't think that Jared was yelling. Maybe that was edited out. Yes, he was heated. But even in those heated moments, he wasn't yelling. So for Carrie to come down and like, what's going on? I was like... Maybe we're not seeing again. We're watching an edited show. Maybe we're 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 not seeing something that they've left out, right? Scherzer, okay. Scherzer says the fact that he couldn't call distances was enough for him to be fired, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, well, he was translating it. You know, being American, we don't use meters, so he was translating it from what was it from feet to meters or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, he definitely struggled. Ben has been promoted. I don't really love Ben, though. I saw Ben was on Watch What Happens. Something about Ben's personality that just gives prick. <laughs> There's something about his person. I just, I, I can't vibe with it. Sidebar, the chef. The chef was on FaceTime with his mother and speaking French because he's French. I forgot that... Um, that uh Fraser speaks French. I was impressed. I was like, okay, Fraser, speak your French. I loved it. And it's not an easy language to learn. But here's why I love Fraser. And I posted a tweet yesterday saying why I love Fraser. Fraser, for me, and how he handled that cat situation, he's been handling cat with kit gloves this entire season. Cat has been struggling. Recently, her best friend called her. She said her family is her friend. You know, she was adopted. We know her story. And Kat was struggling because her friend was struggling and she wanted to be there for her friend. So Kat was breaking down and she's just like, I, I got to go. I got to go. And Frazier in that moment, how he handled that situation. First of all, amazing chief stew, amazing professional, amazing manager. He's just like, she's been struggling this entire time. It's time to let her go. It's time to let her go. I can't hold her here when she really is just not mentally doing well. Here's the thing. Some people on Twitter, hey, Twitter, feel like when I said that, that I was talking about Frazier as a reality TV star. And I think he is good. He is no Kate Chastain. When I say that he's a good chief stew, I'm not talking about him being a good chief stew on Below Deck. He is a good chief stew. But I, I was referring to him as a chief stew, like in real world, like in the real world of things and, and handing, and, you know, handling and managing people. But I also think that he's a good reality TV star. Is he Kate Chastain? Well, not a lot of people are going to be Kate. OK, Kate was just good. But he does give us great confessional and funny. I'm not loving this season as a whole <laughs> from, you know, uh, from the cast that we currently have. I'm not really loving this season. But I still love Below Deck. I still love Below Deck. I still ride for Below Deck. And that's why I'm still watching it. All right? And I thought this was a, a good episode. All right? All right. What else did I want to talk about? We talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about that. Wow. We covered a lot of stuff, but we still have more to talk about. We still have more to talk about, like Bruno Mars. Let's talk about Bruno Mars. You know, we did a separate story this week talking about Bruno Mars and him allegedly owing $50 million to MGM. That's when we also found out that apparently Silk Sonic, you know, the, the duo that, that he formed with Anderson Pack, apparently they had broken up. But now they're, they're partnering to do a Las Vegas residency at the park also owned by MGM. Well, MGM is coming out in defense of Bruno Mars. 
So according to TMZ, Bruno Mars doesn't owe millions in gambling debt to MGM Resorts, despite what a recent report claimed from News Nation One. I'm adding that last part. A rep for MGM Resorts International tells TMZ, not MGM speaking to TMZ, the singer doesn't have a $50 million gambling tab on the books with them, even though some recently alleged the opposite. Instead, MGM came to Bruno's defense, calling the allegation he owes a massive sum completely false. In fact, the Las Vegas hotspot is super excited to collaborate with the Grammy winner again in the future. Not exactly the tone someone would take with a dude who's got a fat bill. Keep in mind, uh, Bruno makes about $90 million a year from his collaboration with MGM. Keep that in mind. So... MGM's rep adds this, we're proud of our relationship with Bruno Mars, one of the world's most thrilling and dynamic performers. From his shows at the Dolby Live at Park MGM to the new Pinky Ring Lounge at the Bellagio, Bruno Mars' brand of entertainment attracts visitors from around the globe. MGM and Bruno's partnership is longstanding and rooted in mutual respect. Any speculation otherwise is completely false. He has no debt with MGM. Together, we are excited to continue creating unforgettable experiences for our guests. So this update comes shortly after a report began circulating this past week that claimed MGM basically owned Bruno over an alleged gambling bill that was worth tens of millions. While Bruno has yet to address the gossip, MGM made it clear that there is nothing shady about their business relationship. Bruno's got an upcoming residency there at the resort. Bruno previously opened up to James Corden in 2016 about being a card shark before hitting worldwide fame. In the car carpool karaoke appearance on The Late Late Show, he explained that he used to play poker to help pay his rent in L.A. So the dude does like to gamble. <sighs> Here's the thing, y'all. Do I believe the report? I believe where there's smoke, there's some fire. And we've talked about it in the previous video that I did about some other addictions that Bruno Mars allegedly has had over the years. So sometimes if you have an addictive personality, it can turn into something else. I don't know if that's what's happening with Bruno Mars, but I wasn't completely shocked that maybe that this ha happened. $50 million? That's a big bill. But is it a big bill for someone that's making $90 million a year? One point something million dollars a night for a part of his show. Did Bruno just write them a fat check and says, or, or not even write them a fat check. Or did he say, in my next, you know, contract with you guys, you'll take that 50 million out of the, uh, out of what I owe you. I, you just never know. Look, I we have to. I, I like to break the stigma of what we think Hollywood is is telling us versus what they're doing behind the scenes and how they're playing this whole PR game. Not saying, not saying that this is true about Bruno Mars, but please understand, MGM benefits from Bruno looking good, and it doesn't look good if he has a gambling issue. Because that could be an issue for them. Have, first of all, the whole premise of them owning him, that doesn't look good. But some people also speculated this is how they kind of kind of keep control of you. You owe them now. They suck you in that way. So part of me is sort of like, Okay, MGM, yes, you're going to release a statement because this makes you look good along with your prize, your prize player. I hope in my heart of hearts, because addiction is real, gambling addiction, sex addiction, drug addiction, that those things are real. I hope that this is true, that he doesn't owe them $50 million. I hope. He is an amazing talent. I'd love to see him in Vegas. What do you guys believe? Well, look, well, all right. We're going to move on from there. But if you missed our report, our initial report on the Bruno Mars $50 million situation, you can check out the video that we posted on that. But according to MGM, they're saying that no smoke here. 
He doesn't owe us $50 million. That is a very specific, large number just to be randomly released. Just saying. Just wanted to point that out. All right, um, let's talk about the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So, you know, there have been multiple rumors about the Real Housewives of Atlanta reboot. You know, our friends over at lovebscott.com were the first to report that there was a reboot coming. Since then, Candy has exited stage left. We've had um, Marlo Hampton e exit stage left. Um, who else has exited? Oh, now Sonya Richards Ross. Well, we already kind of knew that Sonya wasn't returning. However... Sonya has not released her own statement, at least not the time of my recording. I haven't checked her socials yet. But Andy Cohen basically confirmed it. Take a listen. And right. how do you feel about, about Candy, Sonya, and um, I'm, I'm Marlo happy. leaving yeah, the show? I'm happy. Because yes. I, I never really connected with Candy as a housewife. She has so much going on for her. And I think it's, it's time to just... Have some more fun. You never connected with Candy as a housewife. Oh, really? No, I thought, I thought she spoke too slow and too low and wasn't as exciting as oh. the others. Okay, too slow and too low. But I do love her as a person. Right. Like, of I course. love her. And yes. she has all those sketches to post online, so she needs the time off. Oh. Uh, not too slow and too low. Y'all gonna stop disrespecting Candy Burris. <laughs> okay, Tucker. All right. Oh my gosh. So subsequently, Andy confirms that Sonya is not returning, but Sonya has not released a statement. She has, you know, normally when you're exiting a show like this, they allow you to be the one to, to let them know. You, they usually post a beautiful picture, a beautiful picture, and they're like, my contract is up. I had a lovely time over at the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Oh, well, she's Jamaican. She'll say in the Jamaican accent. <laughs> blah, blah, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm surprised that Andy would be so flippant with it. I don't know what happened in regards to that because normally, like I said, they allow the housewives to make the announcement themselves. And we have to keep in mind, Sonya's relationship with with Bravo and NBC Universal is outside of Housewives as well. You know, she does commentating for NBC. So I don't know. I just found that to be surprised. But the, the, the really surprising part was when the, I believe this woman's name is Mariah uh, made a comment about slow and low. I was like, wait, up, wait, hold on. Let me play it again. And right. how do you feel about Candy, Sonia, and um, I'm, I'm Marlo happy. leaving yeah, the show? Yeah, I'm happy. Because yes. I, I never really connected with Candy as a housewife. She has so much going on for her. And I think it's it's time to just have some more fun. You never connected with Candy as a housewife? Oh, really? No, I thought she spoke too slow and too low and wasn't as exciting as oh, the others. Okay, too slow wow. and too low. But I do love her as a person. Right, like, I love her. And she yes. has all those sketches to post online, so she needs the time off. Oh. The shade. <laughs> Look, the shade. Well, speaking of shady, <laughs> speaking of shady, can we talk about this situation with, with NeNe Leaks and Portia? We did a separate video talking about NeNe Leaks and Portia all right, already. And NeNe went on her Instagram story and posted this seven, over almost eight minute Instagram story about how she was supposed to, well, she did the Upshaws. And then she did, um, uh, she did the upshots, but she was supposed to do it with Portia. And Candace came out and said that she was also asked to do, I guess, Portia's role. I'm not sure which, which role she was supposed to play. And the role ended up going to to Cynthia Bailey after Portia turned it down, telling production over at the upshots that her and Nene ha haven't haven't gotten along in the past. So since then, Nini, let me show y'all what Nini did. Nini's Nini explained in that video that look, she explains in the video that she, Portia's issue with Nini cuz she confronted Portia about it. She explained she explained that Portia was upset about Nini not reaching out to her after announcing her divorce from Simon Gobadia. We are not going to talk about Simon and what he's been posting on social media 
Simon is a messy, messy fool. I could never in my life date someone like Simon Gobadia because he is, he is too old and grown to be acting this way on social media. Portia has remained pretty much silent on socials in regard. I mean, somewhat silent, not 100% silent. But he's been nothing but sh liking shady comments, commenting things. Sidebar, when, when Nini posted that Instagram story about Portia, talking about her to production and then saying that, you know, you didn't reach out to little sis after I made that announcement. Nene says, I don't even hang out with Simon. Only for Nene to post on her Instagram story, her hanging out with Simon and his new girlfriend. All right. Girlfriend, I told you to get away from Simon. He is messy. You don't want that karma. Because it's just going to blow up in your face. But I guess there will always be someone, right? If it's not her, it'll be someone else. Messy. And look, I'm not saying that Portia's innocent because I really don't love the fact that Portia spoke to powers that be. No matter how you feel about Nene, speaking to powers that be, especially on a black woman saying that she might be difficult to work with, is just something you don't do. It's just something that you don't do, especially if they're... Because we literally have seen Nene and Portia double date, hang out, take trips together. So I really was completely shocked too. I'm not saying that I felt like they were best friends, but for you to say that to production of this opportunity, and you know what your friend has gone through since leaving Bravo, saying something like that, it's irresponsible. Like even if you don't love Nene, and I can get, understand... But I still probably wouldn't say, oh, I can't work with her. Especially if you having dinner with her. I can say it because I don't have dinner with her. I'm not hanging out with her. So Nene posted this on her Instagram story on Sunday saying, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Hanging out with Simon Gobadia. All right. Sidebar. I did see that. Porsche, I did see because the people, you know that aren't block send me stuff. I did see that Portia was in LA and she posted up on, on her socials because Nene in her eight minute Instagram story said that Portia Gobadia, Portia Williams Gobadia is not a star. She's a Bravo celebrity. She said, let's be clear. <laughs> well, Portia posted up a picture of herself and then in the caption, just put a star. A lot of you had opinions and thoughts on Portia and her not is she a star or is she a lot of you said she's not a star a Bravo celebrity an employee of Bravo yes but a lot of you have also said you understand why Portia may have decided not to work with 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 Nini and because of her new contract with Real Housewives of Atlanta she doesn't want to be on the same screen with her and maybe it was Bravo that told her yeah girl we'll get you another another opportunity to be on another show you don't have to do this do this Maybe. But Candace is also weighing, Candace from Real Housewives of Potomac is also weighing in in regards to what what is going on between Nene and Portia. Nene leaks. Apparently she's saying that Portia did not want to shoot an episode of The Upshaws with her and uh, that kind of cost her that gig. Mm. What? Well, first of all, I, I, I have some tea on that. I have okay. some ET. So I was actually also approached for this same role. And I was in L.A. when I got the call, and then I was kind of waiting around to see if they were going to call me, and they never did, and so I went home. Kenya, I also heard, was approached for this same role. So okay. they just reached out to all the good housewives, all the acting housewives, and it went to Nene and Portia, and then I guess Portia decided it was No, she didn't want to do that. And, you know, Nene had said at the time, she was like, look, we have, haven't had issues in, you know, right. over four years, so right. don't do that. But basically. I feel like... Nini was looking at their friendship and conflating that with a work relationship. Clearly, Portia is fine to kiki and break bread with you and have drinks with you, but she doesn't see you as someone that she wants to work with. That Those are two different relationships. In her Instagram story, she was out with, with her man, and then also with Simon and his rumored new flame, Yasmin Ibrahim. Nasty work. Yeah, but I will say Simon posted my habisha sis 
Keep winning, very proud of you. Been my friend before BS. So I guess he's trying to say he's trying to clean it up. Yes, I'm all out, but this is somebody I've been friends with. That was a double date, and Nene did that to be shady. Nene posted it like three times. Right. (laughs) Look, I mean, look, that's the latest update on the whole situation with Nene Leaks and Portia. I, I honestly was surprised. I, I, and that's the only reason why I'm sort of like something must have happened here, Portia. Like this is something's not right. We could say a lot about Nini, but I literally had seen a, a lot of posts of Nini and her guy Naomi and Portia and her then husband, well, still husband, a strange husband, Simon. And now Simon is is shading Portia all over social media. Simon, sit down. I can't wait till you go into off into obscurity, so we, we don't have to talk about you anymore. I, I, I don't understand. I've never understood that relationship. I never believed that relationship. I don't know what went down, but I'm sure it was something shady because there has been nothing but shade involved when it comes to Simon Gobadia. Anyways, all right, all right. Moving on, moving on to some more Real Housewives of Real Housewives related news. So. From what we are hearing, because I know a lot of you are wondering in regards to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, who is coming back and who is not coming back? I've heard word on the street, Garcelle's not coming back. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Lies. The lies. I'm joking. I'm joking. Imagine I, I predicted something. Else. No, I'm joking. I'm kidding. Calm down. Calm down, everyone. Calm down. I'm joking. I'm playing around. I don't know. I would be very devastated if, if Garcelle did not come back. No. Well, according to um, Sutton Strack, it looks like Anna Marie Wiley might not be returning next season. All right. So in this new interview, aside from working on her friendship with Kyle, Sutton has no plans on mending her friendship with Anna Marie, especially after their feud over the newbie's medical profession. Sutton says, I don't even talk to Anna Marie. Then asked if she would want her back for season 14. She hesitated before responding. She's like, "Uh, I don't know what else she's going to talk about. What could she talk about? Like, I don't know. What's next? My roots and my hair? Who cares? Who cares? (laughs) The fashion designer insisted Denise Richards, 53, should return full time. Not fashion designer. I guess, well, she is technically. Uh, Not technically. Uh, Should return full time after she made appearances on season 13. I don't want to see Denise Richards. Right? Anyone else? I don't want to see it. You let me know in the live chat. Replay crew, you let me know if you want to see it. All right? Uh, She says, I wish Denise would return, Sutton confessed. I love her. I'm a huge Denise fan. I think she's wonderful. The Georgia native continued, Denise is very funny, and she's very smart, and she's so beautiful. Sometimes I get mesmerized just looking at her hair. Sidebar, I really did like Denise Richards' hair on Watch What Happens Live this past week. I was like, I like this wavy hair and the the color. But she was terrible in her return. I don't want to see Denise return. I'm sorry. We've given her opportunity after opportunity. Exactly. Rita says, no, how about Camille? I've been saying bring back Camille. And they brought her back, but we didn't get anything from Camille. And that wasn't Camille's fault. That wasn't Camille's fault. It was Kyle's fault. No, I don't know whose fault it was, but we didn't get enough about Camille. Camille is married. Camille has money. Camille knows these women. There's history. Camille's willing to share her life. I think. (laughs) I'm trying to remember over the years. Yeah, she shared her life. She came on this damn show to divorce Kelsey Grammer. Well, he put her on the show to, to get divorced. Damn, Camille. But you won, Camille. You won. All right. Speaking of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Mauricio has a, a new show, you know, uh, coming up on um, Netflix called Buying Beverly Hills. Season one was eh, but you know I love real estate, so I, I, I don't mind watching. So you might not know this because we didn't do a separate story on this. Paris Hilton slammed Mauricio on social media after seeing a clip from Buying Beverly Hills where he's talking about his relationship with Rick Hilton. As you know, on the season finale, not the season finale, but the reunion part three, we talked about this on Beverly, uh, in regards to Beverly Hills, on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. 
So Mauricio is responding to Paris Hilton's comment on social media. The thing that has caused a little stir is the discussion over creating the agency, leaving Hilton and Highland behind. I got kind of by Hilton and Highland. I am Rick's brother-in-law, but unfortunately it got sour because it really affected the family, Kyle, more than anybody. You know, her family stopped speaking to her. Your niece Paris speaking out uh, recently, not a fan of this conversation. What is the, your message on that and sharing all that? Look, it's, it's sad that she got so upset about that, um, but at the end of the day, it was, you know, it's two businessmen making two business decisions. You know, I, I, I felt like I deserved something, I asked for something. Um, he didn't, he didn't want to do it, and then I chose to go off on my own. I wanted to take care of my family, I wanted to be successful, I wanted to go forward, I wanted to do the most I can do, um, and at the end of the day, I made that decision just to go forward with this thing. So, um, you know, certainly no bad blood on, no bad blood on my side. Mm. Mm. So Paris Hilton in her comments said this, my father is a consummate gentleman and has always taken the higher road. He would never speak neg negatively about his family, especially in the press. Frankly, we are all sick of him, Mauricio, using the Hilton name every chance he gets to plug his lame show. It's enough already. <laughs> <laughs> For Paris Hilton, who also doesn't necessarily always speak out on, in the public or press or in social media, the fact that she's speaking out it, it, in regards to this says a lot. And she's right. Rick hasn't spoken out. Do I think that there was some bad business? Do I think that Rick could have probably supported Mauricio more? Yeah. But I also have to keep in mind that this is a business issue that they've had. And I don't think that Mauricio could have left Hilton um, real estate, whatever it was called. I don't think that Mauricio could have left there and there wouldn't have been bad blood. As we know, on the reunion, Kathy accused Mauricio of stealing, you know, um, some of, of the employees for the agency. And look, can you really steal anyone if the people want to leave and they want to follow you? I don't think you can. And I don't think Rick is is silly enough to believe that no one was going to leave with Mauricio. You could have bad blood about it. You can be upset about it. But realistically, I'm not surprised that people left. This happens in business, no matter what business it is. If, if, if you have a team of people that are working with you and you have sort of like, your, you know, real estate's a little different. He had his own, like the Umansky group under this Hilton brand. So I'm not surprised that his team were like, I'm going to leave. I want to go work with you. Because Mauricio felt like he wasn't getting the just, he, you know, according to him, professional love that he wanted from, from Rick, who was his brother-in-law. All right. But him using it for his fodder for his reality show, that's a whole other thing. Because a lot of people did call out Mauricio for season one, talking about how he made it in real estate and kind of kind of skipped over. <laughs> skipped over the Rick Hilton of it all. But maybe he didn't want to mention the Hiltons because anytime he does, it becomes something in the press. Maybe. But I guess he's not stopping this season. I guess he's not stopping this season. All right. Are you guys going to be watching the new season of Buying Beverly Hills? I probably will definitely give it a watch. I don't. Here's the thing. And I said this before and I said this in the comment section. I believe it was on Bravo Snark Side's uh, video of one of the stories. Oh, it was it was a video of Mauricio dancing to Texas Hold'em. And I said, you know what? I'm going to create a t-shirt that says Rick Hilton could would never. Because there's certain things that, I, look, and I get it. He's a reality TV star at the end of the day. But he's also a very successful real estate mogul. And I was like, Rick Hilton, who has been successful in, in what he's doing, would never do Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> would never be on social media. And look, he's also of a particular age. We're in a different era. But every time I see some of these little things that Mauricio's doing on socials, I was like, sir, you have garnered millions and millions of dollars in real estate. Oh, what are we doing? Even when he did real, uh, when he did Dancing with the Stars, I was like, because, you know, here's the thing about him being on reality television. He never really was a full focal point on Real Housewives. He was sort of like he would come through, support Kyle, and then we wouldn't see him. But, of course, now he has his own reality TV series, which I don't fault him for. You should, but even that, you should sort of breeze through on that. 
Everyone else should be the star. Very much like Selling Sunset. Everyone else should be the star. Not, not you. It shouldn't be about you. But I get it. They want to, you know, reap the benefits of what's happening on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. His marriage situation. Of course, they're going. That's going to play out. Uh, Danny says that I'm watching for the T. I'm watching for the T. Apparently, Mauricio's talkative on the show. Apparently, they, they're going to use that as a part of his storyline. Samara says that he likes the fame. Yeah, a lot of people do. It doesn't matter how much money you've accumulated. A lot of people love the fame. All right. Um, uh, Rahina says, also when he was uh, when he was play bar with the Brazilian star. Mm. Uh, hey, Adrian, one of our favorite real estate folks. Uh, Adrian says, Mauricio's group brought in over 20% of $1 billion in annual sales. That's over $200 million. Kathy and Rick just wanted him to remain under them. They should have paid him a partner. They should have made him a partner. And when, and when, wait, they should have made him a partner. And when they didn't, he left. Thank you for breaking it down that way, um, Adrian, especially as our real estate expert in the, in the chat. So when you, when you put that into perspective, he felt disrespected. He felt professionally disrespected by Rick Hilton and the and, and the and the folks. So the minute he left, I wasn't surprised that people are going to be in their feelings because now you're taking two hundred million dollars from under me, and now you're taking some of your agents that were helping build that. Honestly, though, for you for you guys that watched um, buying Beverly Hills, I really wasn't impressed by Mauricio's style of selling, but that could could be just based off an. And, and edit. But based off what I saw, I was like, he's selling millions of dollars? Look, and I'm sure Adrian can tell you too, there are some people in this business that make millions of dollars and you're like, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how. Adrian says those agents could have stayed at Hilton and Highland. They left because they trust him. Exactly. They wanted to continue to work with him. So you can't really blame Mauricio for them deciding to leave. He didn't hold a, a, a thing to their head for them to leave. Exactly. Foxy, Foxy wants to remind us. Thank you, Foxy. Foxy says he's still an awful man laughing at Jax when Erica cussed him out. Well, thank you. <laughs> look, look, look. We can we can feel both. We can feel both. Dia says 20 percent is a lot. It is. It is a lot. It is a lot. Uh, Gigi reminds us that he disrespected Jax, uh, Garcelle's son. I wonder how Garcelle feels about Mauricio. I wonder if that's still in, in the back of her mind. Samara says Selling Sunset is better. You know how far behind in Selling Sunset I am? Like, I really want to get into it. But after the way that those, those producers treated Selling Tampa, I'm like, mm, <laughs> look, mm. Because I still want to see that. But anyways, <sighs> I say all that to say, did I cover everything that I wanted to talk about today? I think I did. And if I forgot, we'll talk about it another time. Let's talk about it another time. There was a, the Shangela story that I want to talk about, but that's really long. That's a really long story, but Shangela is facing ac multiple accusations of SA. Um, the recent lawsuit was dismissed, but Rolling Stones has a whole expose on the Shangela story. So if you are missing out on that and you want to know more about that, head on over to Rolling Stone. They have the full article and investigation that they conducted in regards to the accusations against RuPaul Drag Race star Shangela. All right, let me say thank you because we had a couple of super chats. We've been live, guys, for... Over two hours. <laughs> Over two hours. Julie, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. D Julie says, how many last names are are you going to give Portia? Well, we'll see what Portia decides to do after uh, she, you know, divorces Simon. You know she loves love, so she'll probably move on to another guy. All right. Portia Peach Juice Williams, formerly Gobadia. J.I., thank you so much for the super chat. J.I. says, I feel like Nini is jealous that Portia is returning to RHOA. That did cross my mind. That did cross my mind. And her career is floundering on Zeus. <laughs> Nini has called for Portia to be fired from RHOA. I mean, a couple of people. She's done that for Cynthia Bailey. Uh, she she tried to claim in that video, um, Cynthia Bailey and I are getting along now. I'm like, now? <laughs> Gracie's quilting and crafting corner. Thank you so much for the super chat. She says, hi, Campfire. The RHOA reunion looks are out. Thank you. We talked about it, Gracie. Thank you so much for the super chat. 
We will be posting the timestamps so everyone can jump around and watch the things that they want to watch. But shout out to those of you. We have like almost a thousand people watching on YouTube. We have over a thousand of you watching on, on Twitter. Hey, Twitter. Wow. Look, wow. Okay, Twitter, we see you. We appreciate you being here for our Tuesday Takeover. If you like a mashup of hot topics like this, we cover everything. We don't just talk about Real Housewives. We don't just talk about reality television. We cover every single thing in pop culture, or at least we try to. And that's why Tuesday Takeover is fantastic to, for us to do, because all the stories that you guys want me to cover, this is where we try to catch up and cover those stories. All right. Uh, and we're not done because I just thought of a story that I wanted to talk about. Thank you, Gracie, for the super chat. Sharon, thank you so much for the super chat. Sharon says, uh, there's a story for why Nini posted the pictures on IG. It involves text messages. Okay. All right. Sometimes I just can't get ca caught up in all the petty back and forth between some of these housewives because I'm just like, oh. Just get to it. Julie, thank you so much for another super chat. Julie says, I think I think the trust broken was something financial and not cheating with women. Being quiet, um, Paris, now how about the OC and the Alexis and John? All right. Thank you, Julie, for the super chat. Rasani, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, Rasani says, let's be clear. Kathy loves the fame. Kathy wants to be the only star. If her sisters and their family need to spread their wings and leave a legacy for their kids, what's wrong with that? I agree. They, they really try to downplay the whole Mauricio of it all leaving, but you can definitely tell that they were burned. And basically how Adrian broke it down in regards to numbers, if a, if, if a person's walking away from your company with $200 million, you're going to feel a way about it. You might not go on social media and talk about it. You might not say it, say it in a reality show. But you're definitely probably talking about it in rooms uh, in Hollywood. Who knows? Who knows if Rick tried to get in, get in, get in Mauricio's way? It wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me. All right. Uh, one last story that I wanted to cover. Let me bring this up. It might be the last story. <laughs> look, look. So anyone else shocked that they've already filmed the Vanderpump Rules reunion? We're only on episode, what, like five? Are we even on episode five? They've already filmed the reunion. Andy Cohen spoke about it on his Radio Andy show about how the, the reunion went. And they released the seating chart. And I said, like, wait, why are we getting the reunion seating chart? <laughs> <laughs> and yes, the reunion seating chart is not much different than last season. Besides Raquel not being involved, Ra Raquel Rachel not being there. But I'm thinking to myself, why are we already... Looking at the reunion uh, seating chart, Andy Cohen did say on Radio Andy that he watched the last seven episodes, and it, and he, he had to remind us he's not involved in production. He just hosts the show. Sidebar, here's the thing, Andy. I know you like to say you have no stake in the fight, but this is a job for you. You are a host of their reunion. So them being successful, them getting more seasons, you still benefit. We're not dumb. <laughs> We are not dumb, sir. <laughs> we are not dumb. Some people are. Some people will fall for it. But you still benefit. This still is a job. You're still getting paid to host this reunion. So he says it's juicy and it's good. We shall see because based off of the first couple of... It's a two-hour um, Vanderpump Rules tonight? No. No. If you guys are expecting a recap on that, uh, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Two hours. I barely have been wanting to even watch an hour of this show and re recap it for you guys. And it's not one of those shows that we recap that get the numbers. Like our Potomac, even Potomac being lackluster, you guys show up for Potomac. <laughs> Married to Medicine. So no promises. No promises on this two hours <laughs> of Vanderpump Rules tonight. I hope not. Oh, hope y'all are wrong. <laughs> hope hope y'all are wrong about that. Anyways, so we got the reunion um, seating chart. It, there's nothing to tell here because it hasn't changed. I'm just shocked that this reunion has already been filmed. It's giving Love and Marriage DC. Like, what is happening here? Why so soon? Why so early? It's the reason why they're they're wrapping up the reunion so quickly is because they know that the season's not that great. And maybe they want to start filming the next season. I don't know. It's it's interesting. It's interesting. 
Anyways, guys, I think that's it. Um, I just want to point this out. How are you guys doing? Did you do it okay? In love. <laughs> yeah, we're doing oh, great. Oh, my answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing good. We're doing good. Yeah. Jonathan Majors and Megan, Megan uh, Good are still together. They were at the NAACP Awards as well. Uh, interesting interaction. Just wanted to let you guys know, still going strong. Still going strong. <laughs> Robin, thank you so much for this super chat. Robin says, are you planning on watching The Valley? Like, part of me wants to watch it because I have to say the promo um, that I saw for it didn't look bad. I was actually surprised. I was like, wait, I might be interested. I might end up watching it if I have some time. Uh, it premieres, what, tonight as well or this week? So I might give it a chance. Oh, thank you. Just Simply says, the Valley premieres tonight. Vanderpump isn't too out. Thank you, Just Simply. Ugh. So maybe I will watch it because then at least that second hour is completely different. So uh, Just Simply says, Kempire, the Valley premieres tonight. Vanderpump isn't two hours. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Well, so maybe I will watch it along with Vanderpump Rules, and I will talk about it during our Vanderpump Rules recap. <sighs> maybe. We'll see how I'm feeling. I've already been talking for over two hours and 15 minutes. All right. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much for the super chats. Thank you to our subscribers. Thank you to our channel members. Some of you have been members for a month, a week. Some have been uh, members for 12 months, two years, three years. We appreciate your support. To become a member, head on over to teamkempire.com backslash join. Don't forget, we are on tour. Kempire After Dark live show is coming to a city near you. Yes, more cities will be announced. Stay tuned for those official confirmations. But if you're in Boston, Nashville, Atlanta, or Seattle, or will be, Check out the description for more details. Get your tickets today, all right? And if you haven't liked the video, if you haven't followed us on Twitter, because quite a few of you watched us on Twitter today. I have never seen this many people watching on Twitter. Hey, Twitter, we appreciate you all being here for the full two hours of our Tuesday takeover, a mashup of some of your favorite reality TV shows, reality TV news, and pop culture news. Replay crew, as always, be sure to weigh in and share your thoughts on some of the topics. We will be posting the timestamps for your convenience. And don't forget, you can take us on the go by downloading the Kempire podcast. All right? While you're there, don't forget to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to our King's Guards. We could not do this without our King's Guards. Be sure to thank them and share your love with them in the chat. We appreciate them so much. Julie, thank you so much for all the super chats. Julie says, KSPN, give a shout out to the Iowa women's basketball team in March Madness. Go uh, Hawkeyes, my alma mater. Thanks for a, a great Tuesday takeover. Congratulations to the women's basketball team in Iowa. Congratulations, congratulations. I have no idea um, how you did, uh, but shout out to the women playing basketball. You guys don't get enough uh, shine or light. Thank you, Julie, for the super chat. We appreciate that. Everyone, have a great rest of your Tuesday. I will see you guys in the next one, the next video, the next podcast. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye, y'all. We're going to get out of here. Come on. Oh, oh, oh.